We are back today with my continuing series, Book and a Cuppa. And basically um, what this is, is I discuss the book that I'm reading for my book club, and then I pair a tea to go along with that. And so for book club this month, we read um, Still Life by Louise Penny or Lois. I think it's Louise Penny. Um, this is a book that is more in line with the type of genre that I like to read. It is a murder mystery. And I figured it was going to be a pretty good book when on the very the very first sentence is, uh, Miss Jane Neal met her maker in the early morning mist of Thanksgiving Sunday. Now that was the thing that I, I had to keep getting in my mind. Because I kept thinking Thanksgiving um, is Thursday, but then the, the the story takes place in Canada, so you have um, the Canadian Thanksgiving holiday. Um, you also have, and it's in Quebec, so French Quebec. Even though it's in Eng in English, you have some French verbiage. There are some uh, phrases or words that are used that are really more um, synonymous with like a um, with Canadian speaking so that was a little difficult to get used to as well um, but it takes place in a very sleepy little mountain type town very small and where everybody knows everybody nobody locks their doors and then this loved woman Jane everybody loved her she ends up dead and the way it murdered, actually, at first they think it's a hunting accident, but as the story progresses, it becomes more apparent that it was no accident, that it was um, purposeful. And so it, the author, um, she really does a fantastic job of establishing a lot of twists and turns because throughout the book, I was pretty confident I had figured it out that I knew who did it, but at the very end, it ended up being the person that I least suspected. So I really think she did a phenomenal job of establishing the plot and making the characters, um, making you as a reader feel like somebody else is to blame when it was actually a completely different person. Um, such a good book. And so this is another book that is also written um for the most part, you you know what many of the characters are thinking. And so it switches back from a perspective from one character then to, from an, to another character. So you know for a lot of the characters what they're thinking. Um, I would say the only thing, there was um, a character, a woman police officer, kind of a um, rookie this is her first case, homicide case she's working on. Uh, Nichols is her last name. And I felt like she, I didn't care for her, her character in the book. I didn't, I did just didn't like that. I don't feel like her character really contributed much to the story. And um, although at the very end, her observation helps to solve the case, but I just didn't really like her and feel that she was really um, a, a huge part of the book. I didn't didn't like that. Um, the characters are all, I think, very believable, very nice. My little one woke up from a nap. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a very good book. I really did enjoy it. Um, I do definitely recommend the book. Now, I bookmarked some of the references to tea. It's really interesting where last month's book we read, the character, one of the characters drank tea. And then in this book, tea is referenced quite a lot. So I thought that was interesting. Um, but there is one particular passage that I found to be quite interesting to me. And this is the passage that made me decide what tea to pair this book with. So um, this is um, an area where 
they just found out that Jane, who is very loved, has died. And it it's shocking and everybody's upset. And so um, one of the, the characters, rummaging through the cupboard like a wartime surgeon, frantically searching for the right bandage, Peter swept aside Yogi tea and Harmony Herbal Blend, though he hesitated for a second over chamomile. But no, stay focused, he admonished himself. He knew it was there, that opiate of the Anglos. And his hand clutched the box just as the kettle whistled. Violent death demanded Earl Grey. And I just thought that that was, um, I just like that, that little passage. I just, I love that passage and I would have never equated that situation with Earl Grey, but I just, I love the way that she wrote that. Um, so the Earl Grey that I selected to go with the book, I wanted to pick something that I felt would be appropriate for the book. So Earl Grey, that would be found in Canada and something it said it was in a box so i assume it was a tea bag so i picked up a uh, picked out rather uh twining's lady gray black tea now this is a spin on an earl gray but it is it's it's fantastic um ingredients are black tea orange peel lemon peel natural citrus flavor with other natural flavors um so it it has um the bergamot but then it's got the twist of the um the orange peel. And so it's, it's an Earl Grey, but not as severe of an Earl Grey, I guess, is, is how I would describe it. So I steeped it up here. I've got it in my, um, this is a David's Tea Bunny mug from a couple years ago, um, which David's Tea, I know a lot of us were waiting to see if something was going to be released for Easter and I didn't think it would be. I know they released the fruity floral collection and that really felt spring to me. And so um, there was not um, a collection for Easter. However, there's a collection coming out tomorrow, uh, the Tuesday the 16th. And I believe there's supposed to be a beautiful holographic tumbler in that collection. There's supposed to be some nice stuff. I don't know when this video I'll get up, so um, the collection may have already been released by the time you're watching this. But anyway, Lady Grey, and you can really smell the the lemon and the citrus in this. I really love this tea. I love this tea. This tea, I've been drinking this for years, and when I was expecting the Twinings. Um, Twinings has a Lady Grey, but it's in a decaf. Uh, and then they have an Earl Grey decaf. And those teas I actually drank a lot when I was expecting because of the caffeine I had to cut out quite substantially. And so, but Twinings I think is solid. It is a tea bag, yes. You know, you do have, it's ground up. There's no question about that. But I still enjoy Twinings, especially this tea. I like it a lot. So you've got the black tea. The black tea is not terribly strong, but you've got this lovely citrus. Um, and I, I don't even know, honestly, if there is bergamot in, even in here. It may just be because it says orange peel, lemon peel, and natural citrus. So I don't think it's an Earl Grey in this, the normal sense because the bergamot is, uh, again, it's not really saying it unless it's in natural flavors. Um, but you taste the lemon. You, you taste that kind of orange that citrus um it's really nice I really like this one is it as flavorful as like a loose leaf Earl Grey no it's not but I really like this tea I think it's it's comforting and I could see in the book when they're saying that death demands Earl Grey this might have been the type of Earl Grey that they would have pulled out from the cupboard um so that is my look at Twining's um, Lady Grey Black Tea, along with the book Still Life. I really recommend this one. Um, if you have tried it, I would love to know your thoughts on it. Uh, and I, my book club is this evening, so I'll find out what 
the book is for next month tonight. So um, again, questions, leave those below. And thanks so much for watching. Bye.